this BYU team for years to come. Third member of our broadcast team. Her birthday was Thursday. We gave her the night off. She's back today. Kiki Solano. What's up, Kiki? Jerem, in talking with Coach Heather Olmstead, this BYU team at first was finding a way to mesh together. They brought a lot of experienced players back, but they had a lot of new pieces that they had to fit in. Talking to the team now, they feel like they are really clicking. And a big part of that is just how dependable these freshmen are. They have proven that they will come in and step up just like everyone else. Two of those players, as mentioned, are Sophia Callahan and Elise Stoll. And talking with the team, they say they've noticed how they come in, they play their absolute hardest, and that has instilled a lot of trust for this BYU team. Thanks, Kiki. We'll see if they play a bit today. Let's get to our keys to the game, presented by Tim Daly Ford. I think for St. Mary's, disruptive serving. They've got to take some chances and try to get BYU out of their offensive rhythm. Also extend the rally. St. Mary's can be a very defensive team as well. They want to put pressure on BYU. Don't just make it easy for them to score points. Take away their favorite shot. For BYU, patient swings. We saw against Pacific, who was a good defender. BYU sometimes had to take three, four, five swings in a rally. They need to be willing to be patient and to wait for their shot. And also continue with the pin-to-pin -pin offense that they've really been developing. Whitney Bauer doing an excellent job getting everyone involved. And as she does that, that opens up holes on the court, seams in the block, and it makes it a lot of fun if you're a hitter. Those keys are presented by Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. St. Mary's 6-4, and four, led by Rob Browning, 17th season. In Moraga, the former BYU club player and assistant coach he, uh, on the men's team. He was uh, an assistant on that 1999 national championship team. Uh, just a couple of uh, legends on the coaching staff there with Carl McGowan at the helm, Hugh McCutcheon, Troy Tanner, and Rob Browning. How about that coaching staff? Yeah. One of the best of all time. Right, and then he tr translated that right into an Olympic stint where he was coaching there as well. And so, yeah, Rob Browning, one of... Uh, premier coaches in the country. BYU, 11th in the country, 11 and 1, coached by Heather Olmstead, who is carving out her own legacy. Just 151 games above 500, winning 89% of her matches. She's been incredible in seven seasons at the helm. Sweet 16 every year but one, and has won in the NCAA tournament every year. A Final Four in 2018, and this year's team feels like it's pretty good, but a lot to prove still here at the beginning of conference play in round two in the WCC. Lots of action today in the league. Gonzaga and Portland coming up. Right now, LMU, San Francisco, Pacific, San Diego, and then in an hour, Pepperdine and Santa Clara. So it's busy. It's busy, but let's go. BYU and St. Mary is about to begin here as Taylor Hefo will start things. The leader in aces for the Cougars. Off the bench. Not bad. BYU going with the White shirt with the blue trim, short sleeve. Were you a, a short sleeve or a long sleeve preference uh, player? That is an interesting question. I was a short sleeve player, but a lot of uh, my teammates liked long sleeves for passing. They felt like passing, they were able to get a better, but I was for sure short sleeve. And now you can go with the, the uh, arm yeah. sleeve if you want yeah. to kind of help with uh, the ball straight on the arm there, right? Here we go, BYU and St. Mary's on BYU TV. And Taylor Hifo goes long. It'll be interesting to see how these two teams play right away because BYU dominated Thursday as we talked about. St. Mary's scored seven points in the first set and nine in the third. Played much better in the second, but that's a performance they want to flush down the toilet. The second set they felt really good about, but I think a lot of these teams just in this first part of the season are finding out who they are, and so consistency just not quite there yet. Kristen Erland, the freshman from El Segundo, makes it 2-0. Career-high 12 kills against Cal. In the Bay Area battle there. The Rock making some noise here. There's Elena Baca. Tickles the tape. Winnie Bauer. Kenzie Kerber down the line. Kerber led BYU with nine kills on Thursday night. And once again, the range of Kerber. She's able to find that line so well. She has every single shot that there is, and so it's tough to know where to line up on her to take it away. Tight at the net. Whitney Bauer with the bump set to Kerber. Dug up. Blocked. 
Good handle, Knudsen goes high, blocked again. And Coel, Coel's offering. And Taylor Ballard Nixon goes long but got hands. 2-2. Two -two. And there's that great example of just being patient in a rally. You know, good defense by St. Mary's. BYU forced to take a few swings, but you've got to be willing to do that. And Nixon again finishing that off with that high contact. There's Boo Laird. And look at Maddie Allen keeping that alive. Allen calls for it on the free ball. Smacked off the block. Some high-powered offense early as Taylor Ballard Nixon with their second off the block. 3-2 BYU. And Kerber with that soft block to set that up, but you can see how fast St. Mary's likes to go to the pins. And so what that's going to do is make these blockers, these wing blockers, so important because the middle for BYU is going to really struggle to get out to close. Off the net, dug up by McComer, the Washington State transfer. Ballard Nixon off the block again. Three for three, and three of the first four points for Ballard Nixon. <laughs> what a start for Nixon. Been, <laughs> she's been a little quiet the last couple matches, but really come on strong in this first set. WCC first teamer a year ago. Four aces last Saturday at UVU, a season high. Thompson, down the line, Maddie Allen doing her job. Kerber out of system swing, gets it to go. Past the double block, how about that? 5-2, five, five in a row for the Cougars. <laughs> Did you see the, the happiness obviously there? Because not expecting to maybe score on that, but you put it in a spot, off speed, he'll take it. Into the net for Maddie Allen. So two of the three St. Mary's points right now are service errors from BYU. We should mention there are two Utahns on the St. Mary's side. Got Megan Chandler from Syracuse, a freshman, and then you're seeing the setter, Alosina Thompson from Layton. Good to have him back in uh, the Beehive State. Heather Knighting. St. Mary's into the net. Knighting hit 250 on Thursday. She's second in the country coming into the week, hitting 500. So, a bit of an off night. 250 is not bad, but when you're hitting 500, you're like, hey, what happened? <laughs> I think in the middle, you always want to be hitting for a higher percentage. Those outside hitters have a little more leeway because they get a lot of out of system sets. And Knighting makes up for it right there. Overpass kill. Thanks to the good serve from Kerber. Disrupting those passing lanes. A lot of float on that ball, a lot of uh, speed on it as well, so it's tough to handle. Same spot. Tough pass again from Cowell. McComer with the dig. Ballard Nixon tips it over. Back row attack, just into the net. From Elena Baca from Greece. Right now the offense a little off for the Gales. One for ten. I think what's difficult, obviously, is when you run a quick offense, it, the, it's very hard to be out of system. It's kind of what you give and what you get with a quick offense. So you have to make decisions on how fast to go when the pass isn't there. Another error from BYU. Yeah, three. Three service errors. And obviously, BYU feeling very confident in their serve receive ability and their side out ability, so they can take some chances behind the service line. But to miss three this early is pretty um, unusual. Elisant, sophomore from Western Springs, Illinois, off the bench to serve here. Bauer, high for Ballard Nixon, dug up. This one high for Cowell. Ballard Nixon cut. Wow, that was inside the 10-foot line from the left side, and she is on fire. Four for seven already for Ballard Nixon at point nine. We talk so much about the ability of Nixon to hit those angles with that high contact. She can find areas of the court that nobody hits. Can touch 10-3, my goodness. High and hittable, but blocked by Cowell in this one rotation on that side. Cut inside by Selby Christensen. Kerber. Nice dig by the Gales. Transition. Cowell. It's been dug up quite a bit already. As Knighting goes long. And the Gales take advantage of the error from BYU. St. Mary's still in this. BYU with some unforced errors scoring points right now. 
BYU hoping to get a touch there. They weren't sure that they wanted to challenge, but it looked like on that uh, replay there may have been. 9-5 in set one. Reinert quickly to Knighting. And down the block by Baca. And it's 9-6. St. Mary's is playing terrible on offense. One for 14, but it's three-point sets. Right, and you see just that set quicker, a little lower. And I think Knighting didn't have much to work with as far as angles there. So still trying to just find that rhythm with the setter middle. Reinert, the former Santa Clara libero. And the least stole into the game early, like you and Kiki talked about. This is fun. Bauer stole down the line, but out. It's 9-7. BYU's third hitting error. The Gales have swung 15 times, 14, or excuse me, 13 digs. Reinert, back row to Kerber, oh! Sent back over, but it did graze the top of a funnel, so it's out at that point. If it, if it grazes something up top, it's gotta stay on your side. Right. Those are some of the rules with this 1951 edifice, the Smithfield House here. It's a unique place to play. So fun, and you see the power out of the back row. Look up by Kerber. Eschenberg makes it 11-7. And that quick transition again. Keep in mind just how St. Mary's has to target all these different hitters on the floor as Whitney Bauer has been setting just pin to pin like we talked about earlier. Into Taylor, the net again. Taylor Ballard Nixon, you know, six attempts. Kenzie Kerber, five attempts. Heather Knighting, four attempts. A lot of different people getting involved. Like you said, another missed serve. Four in all. You always given three hitting errors and four serves. So seven of those eight points, freebies. Yeah, they're not making St. Mary's earn any yeah. of their points. The one earned point so far. Good diving save by Eschenberg. Kerber out of system, back row. Knudsen with the dig. At least Stoll hits a heavy ball, dug up. Quickly, Kerber, dig, Eschenberg calls for it. Sets it for St. Mary's. Who gets the kill? 11-9. The Gale's hanging in there. And how fast, right? <laughs> these rallies just so quick. With both these teams running such quick offenses, it's just fast, fast, fast. Hardly able to keep track of what's going on as they keep moving. Selby Christensen took advantage of that pass. Cougars by two, Eschenberg. Up that, the gut. That's a good play right there because what St. Mary's was doing was serving the ball short to hopefully take Kenny to Eschenberg completely out of the offense. That would allow the blockers to kind of split to the pins, line up better. But BYU still able to find a way to get Eschenberg the ball. BYU goes 6-4, six, 6-5 six, with the middle blockers. It's 5-11 and 6-2 for the Gales. Little undersized, but scrappy. Boo layered one of those at 5-11. Blocked that one. That's the kind of play I'm talking about right there. The dump from Bauer. Well-timed, and it's 13-9. Such a smart play, but you saw the defense we talked about from St. Mary's just sitting back there, waiting for the hard swing. And so for Bauer to go right over on two, that's going to find a big hole in the middle of the court. Bauer, the WCC Player of the Year, Setter of the Year, first teamer, had an outstanding sophomore season. 19 years old, turns 20 in November. Reclassified Mr. Junior, uh, senior year as Carper just crushes that down the line. My goodness. 14 to 9 as Kerber gets her third kill on nine swings. Kerber hitting with so much power. And that's tough, right? Down the line, when you're a defender, you have less time to react. More people get hit in the face on those quick, quick down the line shots than anywhere else. Shelby so Christensen with the kill. This is the home of Scott Sterling, volleyball and soccer <laughs> edition. They uh, shot it on this court, the volleyball edition, which was awesome. Where did they have him playing defense? Middle back? Probably. I think at one point they raised him up to even block. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I did have people come up to me. Uh, even last year, I was coaching a 12s team, and 
and this cute little 12 year old was like have you seen this video this guy and i had to tell him that it might not be real and he was devastated <laughs> what wait and that was more on the byu side just giving up those points it's yeah. amazing unforced errors you know how that keeps teams in the mix Miley Juke saying timeout. Rob Browning said timeout. So we will step aside. Rob Browning will have a chat with Baca and company. Down seven and set one. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Samri. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing. Excellent. Cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points. Gift card. Concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. And BYU made such a difference in our lives. I think really helped mold us as to, as to who we are. And so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter, we thought, okay, that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in. We want to promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region. We want people who leave BYU to still stay connected. Jalen Ballard Nixon, four kills on six swings to go with two digs so far. She was on fire, it was four of the first nine points. Right, and Nixon again, just such an incredible release there. Her high contact wrist snap allows her to be up and over the block, finding those deep corners. She is very tough to stop when she's on. Now, I'm not saying it's the entire reason for this, but Taylor Ballard Nixon did not make the road trip that included number four pit on the road. You certainly feel like if, sure. if Taylor Ballard Nixon's in that match, maybe BYU's got a better, I think BYU's got a better shot at, at winning that. That's the one loss so far, 11 and one on the year. I, I think definitely. 17-10. Blocked twice, but out. St. Mary's earns that kill, just the fourth kill of set one. Well, and if you look at Rob Browning calling those two quick timeouts, he's thinking, we are in this game and we are have no offense. Let's get just a little bit of offense going and we can come back here. Seven freebies of the 11 points for St. Mary's. Earned versus unearned, if you will. Oh, what a dig. Oh, and then Knutson sets it over. Cowell thought it was her ball. And then Eschenberg goes long, another error. Now, Nutson's just trying to make a play there, but Cowell felt like it was her ball. And by the way, what a, and what a dig here by Nutson. Chandler Cowell's brother, Colton, played for Hawaii. He's an enemy of the state to BYU <laughs> men's volleyball. After coming in here in 2019 and just crushing BYU, a young BYU, and then 2020, BYU goes to Hawaii and wins uh, splits, some epic matches there. And then Hawaii defeated BYU in the national championship game in May in Columbus, Ohio. So when BYU sees a cow, there's a little bit of a... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that was what, a great, a, great Hawaiian family. team, though. Oh, my goodness. They were It was amazing. fun to watch. It was a great BYU team as yeah, well. Very. Hawaii was better. Block in the middle as Boo Laird is denied. BYU not... That's one of their first stuff blocks on the night. And Knighting getting up in there. And you see how Laird does such a good job of hitting those corners. And so it's important for this BYU block to really drop their arms into a seam. Yeah, first block, like you said. And a kill on the edge. Make it 19-13 for Kristen Erland, the freshman. So here's Boo Laird, the leader of the team, fifth year from San Luis Obispo, leads the team in hit percentage and block percentage, second in the league in both of those categories. 19-13, Kerber down the line, right at Boulard. Expecting a middle to handle that one's a tough ass. Expecting anyone to handle that <laughs> is really tough. It comes at you so fast, and good job for Laird to even be in on it. Nearly Scott and Sterling. frustrated, right? Yeah. She's like, ah, oh, almost. Could have had it. 2013. Nudson sets it high for Cal. Dug up by Ballard Nixon. Simple stuff, six for 11, no errors. 
Good pick up again from Nixon as an off blocker. Defensively to get that ball and then to get outside for her approach to transition. It's Kerber serve it up. The grad transfer from that team up north. Three-time All-American at Utah. What a match we had a week and a half ago against Utah in here. With BYU, top 15 matchup, which BYU won as Erland gets another kill. And then Utah goes up to Seattle and beats UW in five dramatically. So that win looking even better for BYU. We'll see where BYU is ranked next week if the Cougars come out with a victory today. St. Mary's feeling like, hey, we're down a touchdown right now, but this is uh, hopefully a long Saturday match. Dumped by Bauer is dug up by Baca. Back set through the block for Selby Christensen. That right side having some success right now. And you see how fast, right? Those pins, St. Mary sets a quicker ball to their pins than they even set to their middle. So that's a little different than a lot of teams you'll see. Yeah, and so the middle becomes where you slow it down, and then it's super quick to pins, which means these middle blockers for BYU have really got to be moving fast. Heather Nighting goes long again. Her third error on five swings, so... I think if I'm Bauer, I'd raise it up, slow it down a little bit. You know, she has time, so she has time to get there and maybe find her angles. Timeout, BYU. Up five, wants to talk it over as the Cougars. Still hitting 323, five hitting errors, but 14 digs. There's been a lot of those in this first set. And then if you're St. Mary's, you're hitting 129 with seven kills and have 16 points like we've talked about. So a lot of weird going on in this first set. Rob Browning and crew trying to bounce back from a uncharacteristic showing. The loss at San Diego is going to be a tough ask to win, but only scoring seven to nine points in two of those sets. Like, whoa, what happened? In this set, they've got the 16. Uh, better volleyball, but BYU feeling like, hey, we're capable of doing better, and that's why Heather Olmstead's chatting with David. Hyde and, and Johnny Neely and Shane Ty to try and talk things over. Well, I think always these coaches are, to quote Hugh McCutcheon, perpetually dissatisfied. That is your <laughs> job to be always looking for where you can improve. The Minnesota head coach, the 2008 USA men's head coach of that gold winning squad that featured so much talent, including BYU alums Ryan Millar. And it's amazing. Amazing, and that coaching staff was incredible. Rich Lamborn, of course, the libero. And Carl McGowan with the uh, the headset up in the stands, giving insight. Yeah. There was there was a situation a few years ago where when Chris McGowan was the head coach, his son of the men's team, Carl sat up with the earpiece, and in the middle of the match, I can't remember who BYU was playing, but they said, hey, in the MPSF, that's not okay. This isn't FIVB. So he had to act, actually oh. come down during the match. Interesting. It was a fun development. Heather Knighting does not go long on this one. 22-16. Isn't that great to see Bauer and Knighting right back out of that timeout? You know, Bauer's going to say, I'm going to get you that ball. Let's figure it out. Not afraid to go to you. That keeps the confidence up in Knighting as well. This is Ballard Nixon. Called six skills before. She's five for eight. Correction on that. Bauer. I for stole. Gold hits it with some pepper, man. 23-16. Definitely has an arm. She especially hit her stride at that her senior year. She just had an incredible year on one of the top club teams in the country. She was like the main. And there. And have another San Diego match in there. And then yeah, St. Mary's we mentioned the toughest road swing in the league is this week. Santa Clara. And then at Gonzaga next week among others. Three ranked teams in the league, Pepperdine the other with San Diego. Two Big 12 teams are ranked, number one Texas and number 10 Baylor for those keeping score at home for two years from now. <laughs> well, and I think LMU uh, has a chance to really be a team that surprises people in the WCC this year. Very well coached, a yes. lot of young talent. Yes, absolutely. It's a potential four bid league, which is big time. It's a good volleyball league. Tough matches, night in, night out. There's Cowell. 
Chandler Cowell, the senior, exactly 11 kills in the last four minutes. So I expect at least 11. Cowell very, very athletic, very explosive there on the right side. Good athlete. Comes so good since Rob, Rob Brannick still learning, growing, even as a senior from Hawaii. Reiner, Bauer, Knighting, yes. Knighting with four kills in set one. Well, it is an interesting now. BYU's trying to find a way to get Knighting the ball. Usually she runs the slide, but especially in the two hitter situation, but they've had her stay in front these last two kills. Some point. Down the right side, Selby Christensen points to the court like, yep, that was in. Now that deep corner, such a nice shot. Anytime you can attack anywhere along the end line. Very tough for that defender to get there. 24-18, set point number two. Nudson. Renner comes up. Perfect pass. Bauer. Eschenberg. 25-18 is the set one scores the Cougars. Bruce to victory at the end. The first 15 points, it was pretty tight. And BYU ran away from it, going up 17-10, and basically sided out to victory. Look at Nixon, she got her first kills, all four of them, probably in the first five, six points. Yeah. And then kind of went quiet a little bit. We saw the middles get involved for BYU towards the end of that set. So it's clear that BYU really trying to work out a lot of kinks uh, within their offensive system as they try to get everyone hitting their best shot. BYU has won 13 sets in a row now. Going back to that loss at number four pit two weeks ago. We start to set off with McComber and Eschenberg with the kill off Nudson. McComber nails right up to the net, allowing Eschenberg to hit that ball. And the passing for BYU has just been so good, allowing Bauer to really run the type of offense she wants to develop because you've got these passers in the back row, you know, one of them being McComber, who's just been so good at not only passing but defense as well. Baca blocked. And Erlin blocked. Erlin again. Dug back over. Blue Laird. Erlin inside of the block for the point. Erlin's 5 for 10. Well, and that's what happens when you do have those quick sets to the outside. It's hard for the block to get up and over and in good position. And so that quickness just really means you want to attack the seam really fast because you could see how Knighting was slow to get out there. Yeah, the one-foot approach on the left side is very quick as Knighting goes at Thompson. Knighting's going to set a ton, eight sets so far, five kills. You know, yeah, I think it's interesting. You wonder what goes on in, in the timeouts, and we saw after that last timeout of the first set, it was all middle, 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 middle. I had coaches, and I'm sure these coaches do as well, where you have different goals for your team. Like, hey, this first five points, we are only going to set the middle. Mm. Like a football offensive coordinator saying the first 15 plays are scripted. Like, this is where we're going to go as Kerber mishandles that one. 2-2. Two, two. Knighting has eight swings. They've either been a kill or been uh, an error, right. meaning blocked or out. So there's been no dig <laughs> on her so far. It's it's all or nothing right Feast now. Feast or famine. 2-2. Two, two. With Boo Laird. Ballard Nixon winds up. Six for ten to go with six digs. And talk, look at Coach Olmstead talking again to Bauer after that play. Faster. Get the ball mm. faster, faster to the outside. They're going to try to outfast St. Mary's, who's super, super fast to the outside. That's interesting because there is, as Ballard Nixon goes long, there are cons to going fast. Like every new coach that's hired in any sport, yes, we run, want to run a fast offense. Right, yeah. Well, sometimes fast is terrible because you, you can create errors, especially in this game or in football, three and out, da, da, da. Sometimes slowing it down is I, an okay move. I agree. It, it's situational, of course, but like you pointed out with St. Mary's, super interesting that it's slow in the middle and right. fast on the pin. Right, yes, I, th I think it is. That's a great point because sometimes you need hitters that maybe can hit with a lot of range and that maybe have a bigger arm and are a little slower. They need those angles. Again, Knighting, it's feast or famine. It's a kill or it's an error. 5-3. <laughs>
and nighting up to six kills on nine swings. The three errors just drag that percentage down, but she's six for nine. The kill percentage is right. high. And you see the power? Of course she's going to get a kill if it yeah. goes through the block because she hits so hard. Ooh, at least stole the freshman. We talked about her on the top of the broadcast making an impact in set two. Stoll getting up, she really works hard on that swing block. Gets up and over and is going to press that left hand over the net. And is mildly excited after. 5-3, <laughs> set two. Cougars up a set. Smacked out by Selby Christensen. And it's three. also, I think, interesting when you have teams that have a quick tempo, right? Quick offense, quick tempo, quick back to serve. Things can go so fast that it's hard to get your bearings, really. And so runs of points can happen very quickly. Another block for the Cougars. Stole on it this time. Gets a big hug from the super senior, Kenzie Kerber, 7-3. She's all over it right now. Two of the three blocks in this match from Stoll in set two. There's Knighting, the junior from Pleasant Grove. Her dad, Tom, played basketball here at BYU. Easy to spot in the crowd. It's one of the tall dudes. Oh, stole with the hustle. And then detonated by Trinity Durfee. Such a smart set. Obviously, BYU with a scramble play, making great defensive efforts, but then it's very difficult to get back up in position as a blocker, and so, so smart to go right at the middle for St. Mary's. Eschenberg, his music just starts playing randomly as Bauer was dug up. Well done by Sant. Eschenberg, soft block. Smacked by Baca. Allen has to hit it back, and that's four hits. 7-5 as St. Mary's keeps it alive. And Elise still working so hard coming off the net. Hurting herself a little bit there. She's got to... Get resettled, get back in. That was a rough fall. Eschenberg, well done by Sant to keep it alive. Here's Baca, dug up by Kerber. Stole down the line, nope. One for seven now for Stoll hitting. Yeah, six, seven. This defense for St. Mary's has been fantastic. It has really stolen a lot of very well hit, hard driven balls and BYU unable to turn around and win those rallies. Reiner, perfect pass to Bauer, back row to Kerber, and she's blocked out of the back row by Durfee. Sevens. And in the match against San Diego, this second set was win St. Mary's. St. Mary's really hit their stride. They found their groove. They play, play very well at this point in the match. Allen steps in, Eschenberg. Another dig for the Gales. Baca blocked, taps it back over, and St. Mary's has the lead on pure will. And you look at the St. Mary's team, a lot of them play beach as well, and they're one of the few yeah. programs in the country that has allows their beach play. BYU TV is brought to you by E-Assist Dental Health Education Foundation. Learn more at visityourdentist.org. Preche Bridal, Utah's luxury bridal boutique and full service salon. And by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 8-7, Gales up on BYU here in set number two. The Cougars won the first set 25-18. And BYU hit 300 in the first set. They're barely above 100 in the second. Stole inside of the block for the kill. BYU relying on the freshman. Now, Aaron Livingston is still out with a sprained ankle. She would be in this spot as the other outside with Taylor Ballard Nixon. So BYU having to go to its bench a bit. But I think that's that. good, yeah, right? Sure. I think you have players, you know, you have Sophia Callahan. You have players who have seen significant time, so they can step in when needed. Owen no was outside the antenna on BYU side. There's Aaron Livingston. Says she's feeling better, which is good. We'll see when she returns, perhaps next week. 
we'll see. And I think what's also great about this is you get better over the course of the season, not in the matches, but in practice. And yeah. when you can have such high level practices with fantastic players on both sides, it raises the bar for everyone. Our high for Stoll just has to throw it to the back row. Sant with the dig. Then Christensen dug up by Reiner. Eschenberg off of Newt Knudsen. 10-8. BYU responds with three straight. Very good timeout and hard work for these middles for BYU. They're being forced to move quickly from antenna to antenna, but also get off and get up out of transition, make themselves available because you see Bauer going right at him. Wow, Tim Wakefield knuckleball just dropping off the table for the ace. 14 aces on the season. Aces are brought to you by Prochet Bridal, Utah's luxury bridal boutique featuring a full service hair and makeup salon. Your one-stop shop for full bridal styling. Learn more at prochetbridal.com as that one goes long. St. Mary's think they got touched. We'll see if they challenge. We've yet to have a challenge in this match. 12-8 BYU. Bauer had such a dynamic first couple of seasons. Had 40 aces as a freshman, which would have been her senior year. Oh, crushed by Trinity Durfee in the Matrix. Right, you look at that seam right there. Stoll had already released to get outside, which, you know, that's her primary hitter there on the left side. But you want to help block in the middle, and especially when that ball was run very, very far to the left. Kerber in the middle. Got weird because the block was all in on challenging that ball tight near the plane, not on it apparently. Well, and especially Kerber in the middle, right? Yeah. You don't see that a lot. And maybe Trying that ball is not set as far out because it was, I guess, conflicted with well, in the middle. She was looping around, and I think what's so fun on mm. that that play is at a left-handed hitter, it's almost like a slide. They can come around and go off one foot. It's a yes. very fun swing. Great dig by the Gales to keep that alive. That should have been down. It's a heck of a defensive play. And then down the line from Baca. Baca needs to have more of an impact here if the Gales are going to challenge BYU. Four kills on 14 swings. Yeah, because Baca is a very dynamic hitter. Gets a lot out of that approach and has a lot of movement on the ball. Preseason all West Coast Conference, 12 plus kills in three of the last four. Had a 17 kill, 17 dig game on September 3rd against San Jose State. Here's the native of Layton, Utah, Lucina Thompson. One of those two setters in the 6 2. Kerber off the block and down the line, 14 to 10. Seven kills, a match high now for Kenzie Kerber. And this again becomes one of the best scoring rotations for BYU. We talk about it all the time, but look at that front row. It's a lot of height. Six, three, four, and three. Pretty big. Tied on the net and then swiped off the block of Kerber by Kristen Erland, who's having a fantastic match. Six kills, no errors on 11 swings. Yeah, freshman, she was a middle blocker. And so that player, that's a nice heads up play, recognize what she has in front of her and tool it out of bounds. Allen. Ballard Nixon off the block. Gales again trying to transition this. Back row is stuffed. And then initially popped up, but double contacted. So point BYU on that. And there's so much going on offensively for both these teams that this is a really good ex example of watching. Look at the eyes of Knighting. She's got to track all the hitters, what's the, what they're doing, how they're running around, because she's got to be involved in every play. Cowell is dug up. Kerber handled by Baca. And then Erland swings, goes into the net. That could have been scary, 16, yeah. 11, yep. Our score box sponsor is Brady Industries, a provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment. Timeout. Kenzie Kerber had nine kills in three sets Thursday, has seven in one and a half here. Hitting 429. 
And you just watch Kerber on the court. That play in particular, look at how she's able to align her body to the best position to swing at the ball, regardless of where the set is. She can make those last minute moves that allow her to turn a out of system play into an in system play and score. Three time All American up at Utah, decided to transfer down to BYU. Recent uh, convert to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as well. And here she is at uh, BYU trying to help this team do what it does, which is win games in the NCAA tournament and just see how far they can go. Heather Olmsted says our goal is to win a West Coast Conference championship and a national championship. We haven't done one of those, so we got to keep going. BYU has been to a couple Final Fours most recently in 2018. Gales with another dig here. Cowell got hands. 16-12, two for 17 for Chandler Cowell. It's been a haul today. Really tough, but that perfect swing right there, just high hands using that block in front of you. Oh, Boo Laird nearly got the ace, Bauer. And St. Mary's blocks it to cut this down to three. 16, 13. And that's such a great example of tough serving, strategic serving. It doesn't have to be a really tough serve, but you put it in a location where everyone's running their approach, and that disrupts everything. This time, Allen underneath it. Oh, great dip by Baca. Tipped by Erland. Ballard Nixon, deep corner, touch, point BYU, 17, 13. Ballard Nixon with seven kills now to go with six digs. She's been serving very, very well in this match. We'll see if she can get back there and push her team to that 20 point mark. Cougars up a set, plus seven in that first one. You're hitting 400 in the match. And Cowell finding her groove. Two for her last two after going one for 16. That's tremendous set also because not only is it quick, but quick and high. That is really tough to do. Thompson, a terrific set. Drew Thompson has plenty of family in the crowd from Layton. Went to Northridge High, home of one Spencer Linton. How about that? And other people. <laughs> Just them. Just Spencer, that's all I'm concerned with. Sorry, Daniel Coates. Bauer wins the joust with the net. That's what setters do. Crucial point there, late here in set two. 18-14. Bauer trying to joust that ball, but this is always an interesting point in the match for this BYU team because it's usually when the opposing teams kind of make a run at the ball or at the match and, and get a string of points before BYU bounces back. We'll see if they can maintain their level at this at this point. Great pop-up by Durfee. No swing though. As Stahl is stuffed. Cow coming on late in set two, 18-15. Cow using that explosive jump to get up and over as Stoll just went right after that line. But there was nothing there. Chandler Cow going down the line. That was close to being out. Tip by Eschenberg. 19-15 for the All-American. And that tip's so smart. Senior. Yeah, you see how she really approached hard. She had her arm back. It looked like she was going to swing really hard. That's why the defense was back on their heels. She disguised that set until the, or that tip till the last second. Four players with six plus kills right now for BYU, including Eschenberg. 19-15. Bauer with the dig. At least stole. And Lee Stoll, it's been tough on offense. Three for 11 now. She's been all over the block, digging the ball. 2015 BYU. This is really Stoll's first opportunity to start and come in and find her groove. So this is this has been a, a learning experience, a lot of um, different opportunities to see different kinds of sets as well. And I think she's handling it well. She's talking to her team. She's working hard, continues to learn. Yeah, big opportunity here in conference play where it really, really matters. Kerber in the middle. There's that play. Oh, that was fantastic. Not only because there's nobody up, but look at the angle. 
Kerber's able to hit. The reason there's no one up is because she kind of snuck behind her middle, and so the blockers didn't even know where she was. 21-16. And that's the first time we've seen that. I'm thinking that's a new one that we'll be seeing a lot of. That's a new one. I think it worked. Hand kicked up. Kerber, this is hittable. Who's going to do it? Nobody. You're waiting by five with four to go. And then the stop block by Eschenberg and Kerber. 22-16, fourth block of the match for BYU. Defense again, you don't tip on Whitney Bauer. <laughs> Timeout, St. Mary's. Danny Drews was completely shut down by BYU, a first team All-American twice, because Whitney Bauer was all over those tips, man. She is gathering those up. And BYU now up 22-16. Cougars hitting 290 in the set. St. Mary's 0-8-8 now. And BYU pretty comfortable here at the end of set two now, thanks to uh, a little push here at the end. We want, look at that communication. Olmstead talking to Bauer at every single timeout. They're constantly trying to find the best ways to get that offense going. Good position. What tempo? How high? Who do we set? When do we set? It's just this constant discussion and then that just reinforces all that Bauer has to do on the court. It's not just play this ball, it's make a quick decision based on a thousand different things. See BYU at number 11. Texas at 9 and 0 and number 1 coming into the week. Pepperdine 23rd, San Diego 25th. The so three WCC teams in the rankings and stilted Cosmo hanging out today. Now, Cosmo went over to the up ref earlier in the match. Miley Jukes will look for a high five, and Miley's like, I, I can't high five you. Yeah. the ref. <laughs> I can't be high fiving a mascot of a team here. So, Miley uh, keeping it professional, as she always does. And Cosmo doing Cosmo things, which is just like, well, how he does has that to be happen? the tallest one. He does. Gotta put that's, on those. That's contractual. Yeah. Yeah. The best dancer and the tallest person. And now he's looking for a high five from this kid who doesn't see it. <laughs> that guy saved him though, so we're good. Taylor Hifo off the bench with that serve. Stop blocked. Guess who? Whitney Bauer. Hifo. Kerber! Taylor Hifo looked at Kerber like, that wasn't the best set I could give you, but thank you for cleaning that up. Exactly. And Kenzie Kerber now with Nine kills, hitting 471. She's been on fire. That's Taylor Hifo's dad, by the way. Played football at Utah, but he's all in with BYU. He's the guy that's standing up. Hopefully not in front of Elaine Michaelis. 23-17. It is great to have coach in here, by the way. The longtime legendary, your coach at BYU, Elaine Michaelis, who attends the matches. We try and make sure we say hello. There she is. Great to see Elaine who has done so much for not just volleyball at BYU, but women's athletics at BYU from the beginning. Just a legend and so much is owed to one person. It is Elaine Michaelis Court and aptly named at that. I wonder if they'll ever do something with Carl McGill in here. I wonder. They, it would be well earned for sure. There you see it. Set point, 24-17. Maddie Allen. Thompson. And Baca says there was touch. Point BYU. No challenge coming from St. Mary's. And BYU goes plus seven and now plus eight. Comfortable victories in the first two sets. BYU, these first two sets, been solid, working oh, on there things, was getting touch. better. But they're not going to call it. They have a challenge, they're not using it. It went off nighting, clearly. But uh, when it's 25, set up on the N64, here's some volleyball stats for you. BYU dominated the first two sets. Like I dominated in Mario Kart right there. Yeah, that pretty much was I would say I played. Right I would say I played better than BYU did. More consistently, More for consi sure. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. And they that don't even seem to acknowledge you. It's no. like it didn't happen. Yeah, I wish I wish I would have had a little more, you know, love from the team, but <laughs> or teams, but that's okay. Here we go. Set three. Trying to get back in the mode. Man, competing for a sec and then just commentating. That's the difference. As Ballard Nixon goes long. 
just her second error. Well, you talk about the, how, yeah, that was a long break. You were able to run a whole race, but this is a re <laughs> chance to reset both these teams. It's it, as if this third set is a new match because all your momentum, all your tempo, everything you earned in the first two are gone and you've got to restart. Overpass. Still live? Nope, it's down. 2 nothing, St. Mary's. Boo Laird and company. You, okay, if you're just joining us, she has the nickname Boo because she looks like Boo from Monsters, Inc. That's from her family. Right. It's not from, like, somebody in college. No, that's from a long time ago. From the, yeah, the moment she was born, and, and it's stuck, and I think that's so fun. Oh, pancake. Look at Nutson's hustle to try and make that play. I could appreciate that as that one goes down. Now, Boo Laird is saying, hey, they were over the plane there. I don't know that there's going to be any conversation about that. But it's 2-1. Gale's here in set three. Now, I think now, everyone is now over they the are chatting. Les Callis coming over and talking to Miley Jukes. And now we have, yeah, because I think this is a difficult one to talk about. Can you challenge? Well, it's less about the challenge, I think, and it's more about, I saw this, therefore we right. can... Yeah, that's true. We can discuss slash jump this if we want. A replay. We'll see. I think coming into this third set, obviously both teams have to bring in what they learned in the first two, and St. Mary's was able to find success serving short against this BYU team. Oh, okay. They give the point to St. Mary's there. Boo Laird's appeal worked. Right, and look at her ability. Oh, I think they're saying back row she is a back row setter and therefore and because boo touched that ball on as she was as bauer was trying to set it she's a back row blocker off the tape and down for nothing what a start for the gales in set number three as baka gets the ace and we talked earlier about strategic serving look at the location that st mary's is choosing to attack they're serving right at where all the front row players for BYU are standing, and that disrupts how they can run their offense. Baca's 11th ace, that's a team high. Thompson. There's Baca, the bump set, aggressive to Cowlin off of Kerber. 5 nothing. Everything going the way of the red and blue here. And that's Time out, BYU. Love volleyball because we have so many different sets and each one is its own little match. The perfect start as Cowell can grin, points at the bench, and BYU calls the timeout. Cougars down five. Gales feeling good to start things in set three. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you? home or hospital really really they do that if you've been seriously injured we'll come to you it's your job to get better it's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights learn more at siegfriedandjensen.com i love riding bikes i heard about jill and wade hauser and jill's mom rosemary they build custom passenger bikes and they give them away it's called the blessing bike i want in i want to meet jill wade and rosemary i want to take that blessing bike for a spin i want to build some bikes i want to meet some recipients and give some bikes away i don't want to crash Volleyball on BYU TV is brought to you by Brady Industries, honestly better. Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. And by Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Go! <laughs> That's the worst replay of all time. <laughs> As Kerber goes long. Hey, 6-0. Gail should go to Vegas right now. Oh, my. Everything going the Gail's way right now. And this is the challenge. If you're BYU, you're tight. 
you're in your own head. How do you reach out and continue to fight, work your way back in, turn to your team? Well, if you're Kenzie Kerber, that's what you do right there. Hey, BYU scored. Kerber has been so awesome today, 10 for 21. 6-1 Gales. Thompson. Boulair blocked. 6-2 now. That's a good adjustment because you don't see that play a lot. That's that play to Laird in the middle, a little slower on the two. It's almost a one and a half, so there's got to be a lot of help there. Kerber steps in, helps out Nighting, and shuts that down. McComer. And then Kerber curls it over. And then Nighting tips it. Blocked. Nighting. Nudson. Cal, standing approach, she goes into the antenna point, BYU. Kerber ends up saving that on the third hit, bumping it parallel with the net, almost past the ref stand and kept that play alive. And fast, look at how fast these reflexes are. That whole play was just quick, back and forth. Bauer. Allen, good set to Ballard Nixon. Thompson digs it. Nudson, high and slower for Cal. Dug up by the Cougars. Bauer, Kerber, one on one. See ya. 6 4. Four in a row from BYU. And that was that speed right there. Credit Bauer for recognizing that middle held on that play. If she could get the ball quick outside to Kerber, there would be nobody up, especially on a left hander. from Maddie Allen and BYU is back in the match. In this set, 6-5 now, 6-0 run for the Gales, 5-0 run for BYU. Maddie Allen's 15th ace that ties Hefo for the team high. In, back to back for Maddie Allen and 6-0 runs for both teams. Roller coaster. Blocked by the Cougars. Thompson bumps it high. Erland hits it out. Seven in a row now for BYU. Good job, Maddie Allen, getting back behind the surface line, setting the stage there, and staying consistent with her pressure, allowing BYU to fight their way back into this third set. Cougars up two sets to none. 18 and 17 were the score. Cal with the kill, five for 23. But at the end of set two, got going there with a couple of swings, so feeling better. It's easy to say, ah, one for 16, I should probably just mail it in today. Nope, just kept going. And I think that's so important to learn as a player is that either when you're playing well or when you're playing poorly, it's not going to last. And so you just have to give consistent effort and wait, and things are going to go your way. Kenzie Kerber, 13 kills now, doubling what almost anybody else has, hitting 478 on fire. Had a season high 18 kills last Saturday at Utah Valley. Cowell inside of the block of Bauer and Knighting. 8 8. And now we've got a set here. BYU was in control, those first two, winning by seven and eight, respectively. And there you see Whitney Bauer trying to run this offense. Third in the country in hit percentage at 320. Knighting, see ya. And that's why I think for Knighting, she needs it higher because she can hit those angles. And so as fast as BYU wants it, I think Whitney Bauer doing a nice job to find her and give her the space so that she can hit in either direction. Nine to eight. It's Taylor Ballard-Nixon had four aces last Saturday. Goes long on that one. Seven service errors from BYU today. Niner. Coming up tonight, 9 Eastern time, countdown to kickoff on BYU TV as Dave Blaine, David, 
And Spencer gets ready for BYU and South Florida. 3-0 and number 15 BYU playing another home game. They played four. Three officially. Vegas was a home game with 80% of the fans BYU as Sophia Callahan comes in and gets the kill off the block. There was a 30-point underdog in college football today, Bowling Green, who defeated Minnesota. It's one thing to cover. It's another to outright win. So BYU better bring it tonight as a 23-and-a-half-point fave. Hit by Durfee. Here's Knighting on the set. Callahan. Oh, what a save from Cal, but it's out. And now BYU up to 11 to 9. The hands from Knighty and outside to Callahan. Good swing, high and deep. 11-3 run for BYU. And smacked in by Baca, 5 for 21. Now hitting triple zeros. And you love the confidence that St. Mary's been able to play with just building throughout this match. Unafraid, they're going to continue to battle. You love watching that in a team. Chelsea Knudsen from Santa Clarita, senior. Callahan. Seeing some good stuff from the young pins in Callahan and Stoll. Aaron Livingston is just a sophomore as well, so the future is bright for BYU. And then, of course, Kate Grimmer. The junior. Next year when uh, Kerber is graduated. Plenty of firepower on this BYU team. Pounded by Christensen. Six kills for Erland, Cowell, and Christensen now to lead the way. Our score, score box sponsor is Brady Industries, a provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment. Alosina Thompson, the senior from Layton, Utah. Her first match as a Gale was against Utah, which is where her mom went. Utah was in town a week and a half ago as Eschenberg gets the kill. We've talked about it, but there's great volleyball in the state. Big Sky Champs, Weber State, really good. Took BYU to five. That was a great match. BYU and Utah ranked the top 15. And the, some quality programs sprouting up around the state, of course. Utah State always good. We're going to give Rob Nielsen some love. Going to hang out with Rob next Friday. We're doing BYU Sports Nation from Logan on game day against Utah State. Oh, that's awesome. Rob and I are going to go to lunch. We're going to hang out. Just saw they have a match that night. They you did. did? Okay. I mean, saw his team. Oh, saw his team. Said, hey, saw your team, saw you checking in, but, you know, <laughs> didn't say hello. Rob's always checked in mentally. <laughs> nice touch from Boo Laird. Swing from Cal, 13-12. Kerber off the block. Thompson, Cal, Whitney Bowers there. Don't tip on Whitney Bowers, says Amy Gant. Oh, Kerber down the line. What do you do to defend Kerber in that situation? Because the block is, is blocking angle. Right. And then you're hoping... Well, look, watch how deep as you get a good look at that tip again, saving it. Whitney Bauer's going to keep that up and hit it behind her, allowing it to be hittable. But that's just so tough to defend when it's high and deep to the corner. Even when it's Le the libero, who's literally paid a scholarship to try and pop that up, it's a tough ask against Kerber. And in out of system plays. That's what's, you know, anyone, not anyone, <laughs> but a lot of people can score in system on perfect plays. But the great players can score regardless. Heather Knighting smashes it. 15-13 in this tightly contested third set that saw St. Mary's start with a 6-0 run. And then BYU went on its own 6-0 run. Kerber. BYU with nine service errors, by the way. The block by BYU, but down on the Cougars' side. And 15-14. Completely different set, though. Yes, So absolutely. as we get towards the end, how are both these teams going to respond? BYU has been ahead at the end of matches, so they haven't had that pressure to perform when it gets tight. Kerber, nobody up, and there was touch. Kenzie Kerber, 15 kills on 26 swings, just the two errors. 
three digs, three blocks. She's hitting 500. Yeah, that's She's the West Coast Conference Offensive good. Player of the Week, pacing for that again. That's pretty fantastic. 500 adds someone in a position to be such a leader on the floor and make such an impact. And an ace from Taylor Ballard Nixon, who had four last Saturday at Utah Valley, now has 15. She's the third BYU Cougar to hit the 15 mark. I wouldn't say this was a strength of hers when she came into BYU per se. She has developed this quite a bit. And I think BYU really works on serving a lot in practice. Cow hammers it down the line. The St. Mary stays in this, trying to push this to a fourth. But BYU familiar with the brooms. Ten of the 12 matches have been sweeps, including four in a row. BYU in a two-hitter situation. St. Mary's has been serving short to take Knighting out of it. Callahan is blocked and then dug back over. High for Baca, off the tape and out. And 18, that play 15. for St. Mary's was exactly what they had drawn up, right? Serve short, take out the middle. That allows everyone to release to the outside where you get the block. But Callahan covering herself changed that whole set or that whole point. Callahan three for four offensively. Good eye by Power. Who looked at it like, ooh, that was closer than I thought, but it was out. 1950 now, BYU pulling away with two late. Right, and she turned to Kerber because Kerber was her eyes, her angle. She had to listen to her yelling, it's out, it's out. Knighting. Baca off the block and out. 1917, big swing for her. Back up to triple zeros from Greece. He's up three late. Nudson. Nudson with the kill. Excuse me, ace. 19-17 as Bauer crashes into the side. Right, and that's something we don't see too often. The passers for BYU, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but they don't get aced. And that is a very rare miss at a perfect time for St. Mary's as they're coming on. And it was off of Maddie Allen, the libero. Kerber. Awkward swing there. To make it a one-point set. Oh, that dig goes flying to the other side from Allen. And it goes over for Callahan, who hits it out, but it's saved by Cal for a BYU point. That was wild. Well, look at Maddie Allen popping this ball up, just barely avoiding the ceiling. And because there's so much spin and it's so high, St. Mary's can't control that. And then Callahan, that she ball's did. going she long, but Cal swings at it. 2017, and Kerber gets the kill, 21-17. That might have been the window yes. for the Gales to come back and win this. Now BYU's up four with four to go. It's going to be a little tougher. Timeout, Rob Browning and St. Mary's. I agree, that's a pivotal point right there for BYU to win. We'll step aside. Maybe it's the last 21-17. We'll see if the Gales can come back here. It was a two-point set. BYU got two. Here we go. Six aces for BYU today. Down the line, Allen. Oh, that's a hittable ball. Callahan goes after it. Trying to cut this. Capped by BYU back. Cal, high for Baca. And down, 22-17. Gales have had chances to convert, but have not uh, have not finished those plays. And look at that, BYU tightening up that block, just pressing low and tight and over for Kerber to steal that. Second and final timeout from Rob Browning in St. Mary's. Like we talked about, making the toughest road trip in league you can. BYU and San Diego are travel partners. BYU ranked 11th, San Diego 25th. And it was a sweep in the Slim Gym. Jenny Craig Pavilion, if you're unfamiliar. That's the nickname. It's a good one. And then BYU here uh, on the verge of getting the sweep as well. Join us October 7th for our next broadcast. BYU taking on Portland, 9 Eastern, on the BYU TV app as the Cougars 
continue conference play. And join us tonight, 9 Eastern time, BYU and South Florida. And football will get you ready with our hour-long pregame show. Countdown to kickoff as number 15 BYU, a 23-and-a-half point favorite, hosts South Florida, who defeated the Cougars two years ago in Tampa at Raymond James Stadium. That's, that's Tom Brady's casa now. So it's a revenge game. Jaron Hall got hurt in that game. Baylor Romney came in. BYU ultimately did not win that one. So... Uh, there's, there's some heck to pay, as they say, around these parts. <laughs> Do they? Don't You're right. They don't. That. They don't say <laughs> that exact word. But uh, BYU TV, you know. If we were app only, maybe, you know. <laughs> nice. The rules are so different. <laughs> <laughs> so three points away from BYU, who have swept their opponents ten of the last twelve matches, all in this season, of course, four in a row, sitting on 14 set wins in a row. That includes against number 10, Utah. He only lost this season at number four, Pitt, with no Taylor Ballard-Nixon. Here we go. Boo Laird, what's up? And, and I think this offense for St. Mary's really giving BYU a little bit of trouble, as you saw. Because it's a little slower, I think the middles, Eschenberg, you know, felt like she was releasing that ball's going to go higher, but then you see Laird come out of nowhere and hit those corners. They're three for eight. Allen, good pass to Bauer. Callahan crushes it. 23-18. Terrific pass from Allen stepping in there. Good set from Bauer and Callahan showing that power. I really want one point for St. Mary's right here. Tell me why. You, oh, because you love Monsters, Inc. and Boo and 23-19. Yep. Yes, 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 yes. This needs to be a St. Mary's point. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just needs to be. Well, Kenzie Kerber ruined that. Match point for BYU. 24-18. It's just not the same. <laughs> Here's Taylor Hefo. Nearly an ace. Wow, that was great. Kennedy Ashenberg. 